All right, biology students, we are starting our new unit, and this unit is on evolution, which is one of my favorite topics. I think you're really going to enjoy this unit. Um, and today is lesson one, so we're just getting our feet wet. This is an introduction to evolution. So it's likely that if you look outside your window, you will notice a lot of different organisms. So you might see a squirrel in a tree or a butterfly flying around or trees or weeds or flowers, bushes. And then within those different plants, you they house hundreds of different species of insects. And then there's things that you don't even see like bacteria. And everywhere you go on this planet, whether it be on land or underground or in the air, in the water, there is more life to be found. And all of it, even you, is shaped by the most incredible of forces, which is evolution. And so scientists have long pondered the diversity of life on Earth. They have asked themselves for centuries, how did the millions and millions of different species and organisms of all varieties come to inhabit this place that we call Earth. And so we're going to see the term diversity a good bit throughout the unit. And anytime we're talking about diversity, we're just referring to a variety of different things that inhabit our planet. So all the things that show up on planet Earth. Um, some of the questions that we're going to focus on, some of the questions that have been focused on throughout time uh, that have led to some of the theories that we'll talk about in this unit are why do organisms live where they do? How did they get there? Which organisms are related to one another? What uh, adaptations do organisms have that allow some to survive and then others to die? And then we know through fossil record and other evidences for evolution that organisms change over time. So the question then becomes how? How does this process happen? So we're going to try to answer these questions throughout this unit. So in this unit, these are the principles of evolution that we'll be discussing. So we're, we're going to discuss the theory of evolution as the organizing principle of life science, which is why you're taking this class. The millions of different species of plants and animals and microorganisms that live on Earth today are all related by descent from common ancestors. So we'll talk about what that means. And then the great diversity of organisms is the result of more than 3.8 billions of years of evolution that's filled every available niche with life forms. So these are sort of the three tenets to this entire unit. And I tell you, if you have some time, um, do a YouTube search for Earth's entire history visualized on a football field. This is like a seven or eight minute video, but it does a wonderful job of showcasing the history of Earth. And it provides a timeline for the emergence of different species that um, you may have heard of, you may be interested in. So if you have some time, take a look at that video. All right, so the first question that I wanna focus on is where did life begin? So as we study life, uh, a common question is where did life begin? So one theory as to where life began is called the endosymbiotic theory. This is one that you need to make sure that you know. Um, so the endosymbiotic theory just suggests that the earliest living organisms on our planet were all single cell creatures. And then some of the neighboring single cells joined and began living together. Uh, as one unit or one organism, one inside the other. So basically, endosymbiotic theory just says that life started as a prokaryotic cell that engulfed or sort of ate another prokaryotic cell. And this partnership was so successful that it led to evolution um, or the evolution of all of the life forms that we see on our planet today, including humans. Uh, so you might ask yourself, that's kind of crazy, what evidence supports this endosymbiotic theory? Well, during the mid-1900s, scientists discovered that both the mitochondria and the chloroplast inside of plant cells had their own DNA. And what was unique about this is it was different from the rest of the cell's DNA. And when scientists looked closer at the genes in the mitochondria and the chloroplast, they found that the genes were more like those from prokaryotes. And so what this tells us is that organelles are more closely related to prokaryotes. And so uh, the takeaway is that life started very simple 
as prokaryotic cells and then over time became increasingly more complex. All right, so we need to make sure that we have down a good definition for evolution. We're going to go ahead and get this today since this is our intro lesson. We're going to, you're going to notice throughout the unit, the definition of evolution is going to vary a little bit depending on the topic that we talk about. But overall, it's a change in the inherited characteristics of a group of organisms over generations. I'm going to say this a lot in this unit, but you need to make sure that you know individuals do not evolve entire populations evolve and this takes generations. So evolutionary theory is just a collection of scientific facts and observations and hypotheses that attempt to explain why life is so diverse on planet earth. And modern scientists define evolution as a heritable change in the characteristics within a population from one generation to the next. And much of what we know about Evolution today is based on the work of Charles Darwin in the late uh, 1800s. However, he did get some help from some other scientists. So we're going to focus mostly on Charles Darwin's work in this unit, but I am going to give credit to a few other scientists. Um, so let's start with John Baptiste Lamarck, who was, he was a French naturalist. He started out as a botanist. Um, but he proposed that organisms inherited changes caused by what's called use or disuse uh, in its parents. And so what he did is he used a lot of fossil evidence to generate many of his theories, but he argued that life was not fixed, uh, which we still hold on to today. He said that when environments changed, organisms had to pivot. They had to change to survive. And if they began to use an organ more or structure more than they had in the past, it would increase its throughout its lifetime. And then the offspring would also inherit that change trait. And a great example is this, of this is like with giraffes. So Lamarck said, if a parent giraffe stretches its neck to get leaves on a tall tree, then its descendants would be born with longer necks. And so basically giraffes evolved over generations to have long necks. And here's a good example of this. So you can see in this picture, Lamarck's theory is that, you know, if this giraffe had to stretch its neck to get the leaves in this tree, then it would have offspring that had a stretched neck. And then if the offspring had to stretch its neck a little more to get leaves on the tree, then it would produce offspring with an even longer neck. And so we don't hold on to that theory still today. Um, this theory has been disproven, but not completely disproven. We do still support some of the things that Lamarck said. There's also a, another Brit British naturalist um, by the name of Alfred Wallace. He's known as the co-discoverer of the theory of evolution. Uh, and his greatest contribution to the theory of natural selection was he simply asked, why do we find this animal in this place? And so as he started to try to answer that question, he realized that just as animals are shaped by where they live, regions can also be defined by the animals that live there. And then we have Charles Darwin, which um, you're probably familiar with, but in uh, the early 1830s, he completed his college studies and then joined the crew of the HMS Beagle for a five-year trip around the world. And he hopped to a group of islands called the Galapagos Islands. And this voyage, this trip would become one of the most important trips in the history of science. And on this voyage, he made tons of observations and collected lots of evidence that then led him to propose his theory of evolution, which explained why and how life changes over time. So in 1835, Darwin made a five-week stop in the Galapagos Islands, which are like a cluster of 18 islands over in the Pacific Ocean. Um, these islands are known as the melting pot for marine and terrestrial species. Tons of biodiversity there. So um, he had tons of observations that he was able to make and then that led to questions and then those questions led to answers. And so during his voyage, he made observations like he noticed the plants and animals. 
uh, were very well suited for their environment where they were living. And he noticed that um, adaptations could be seen in desert organisms that maybe were not seen in other organisms living in other areas, like say a, a rainforest. And so you need to know adaptations are characteristics that an organism has that enhances its survival. And of course, we know if an organism can survive and reproduce, it passes on those traits to its future offspring. A great example of an adaptation, um, this is a good example of a plant adaptation, is the root system in desert plants versus plants found in the tropical rainforest. So desert plants establish very deep root systems, and of course this is needed because they have to obtain water. However, the roots for many trees in tropical rainforests are found only like short distances below the ground. And this is because the soil, except for the top soil, has very poor nutrient content. So the roots stay close to where the most nutrients are. One key observation that Darwin made was that variation exists in life. And so you just need to know, because we're going to see this term over and over and over again in our future lessons, variations are just differences in traits among organisms. So the classic example, one that Darwin noticed when he was in the Galapagos Islands, was the different variety of beaks that existed within the finches, which are birds that were found on the Galapagos Islands. And so if you'll notice, just in these four different um, finches, their beaks are very different. And so he asked himself this question, why do finches have different beaks? Uh, and the answer to that, of course, is because they are adapted specifically for the food that they need to survive. So you can see finch number one has sort of a stout strong beak and this is because this particular finch feeds on nuts they have to break open that hard shell um, and then you can see that's very different from the finch that eats something like seeds that may not have such a tough shell and then this finch here that has to dig through moss for insects it's going to have more of a pointed elongated beak and so he started to notice that variation exists and that variation um, is needed for adaptations that allow these different species or these different organisms to survive. Uh, Darwin also collected, like Lamarck, he also collected many fossils over the course of his voyage. And you just need to know that fossils are preserved remains of an ancient organism. And Darwin noticed that some of the fossils resembled organisms that were still alive, but some of those fossils looked like organisms or creatures that he had never seen before. So he found fossils for both organisms that no longer existed, like the giant sloth, and for organisms that resembled things that he was familiar with. Um, so this indicates that organisms can go extinct and that existing species are likely related to ancient species. He also, this is kind of neat, he also found fossils of uh, marine organisms in the mountains. So this means that some sort of geological event happened um, where these organisms were once, these mountains were once underwater. Uh, Darwin also noticed some similarities and differences among different types of organisms. And so through that, he became convinced that organisms change over time. And so one of the things he noticed um, was in the Galapagos Islands, these 19 islands, um, you might have the same similar species on the islands, but these species were uniquely adapted to their particular island. So this is where our lesson stops. If you're in my class, we're going to do this little activity. Um, but that ends our introduction to evolution unit. And I will see you in the next lesson.